Creating your own table settings is a great way to make a wedding reception even more personal and special. We'll show you how you can decorate the tables in a range of different styles that will suit all tastes, using a mixture of ready-made and handcrafted items to create the look. It's a lot of fun to bring a personal touch to the proceedings, and it's quite simple to make your own chair back decorations, favour bags and boxes, place cards, napkin rings, and wine glass charms for all the guests at the reception. We'll show you a range of individual projects that can be used to create four different styles. Traditional cream and silver, romantic pink, luxurious cream and gold, modern bright colours with an Indian flavour. The traditional style table features cream, china and table linen, silver cutlery and crystal glasses, with touches of gold in the napkins and decorations. There are tips on how to style this look for yourself. Handmade decorations to complete the setting include wired silk bows dressed with crystal drops to decorate the chair backs, favours sachets and an unusual knife and fork place name setting, both adorned with organza ribbons. A pink table theme is always popular and allows you to indulge a romantic mood using motifs such as butterflies and hearts. Create your own butterfly place name cards, jewelled with sparkly pink hearts, plus frosted holders for pink candles, with clear glass hearts that allow the light to spill through. Pile the centre of the table with heart-decorated favours boxes, filled with tissue and pink foil-wrapped chocolates. Add some touches of silver and theme all your glassware and table linen to match. A cream and gold theme brings an opulent twist to a classic table with gold decorated champagne flutes and gold organza favours bags adorned with wire hearts. Gold pearlized beads make napkin rings stand out on a table draped in cream linen. In contrast, for a modern up to the minute theme, be inspired by the bright rich colours of India. Choose sari material for tablecloths and add touches of hot pink, orange and turquoise. Dress organza napkins with kitsch gold, baubles and orange ribbons. Make brightly beaded charms to identify wine glasses and create giant chocolate filled wrap sweets decorated with Indian shisha mirrors to dress up each place setting. Complete the theme with striking glassware and a bowl of bright orange floating gerbera heads or floating candles for an evening reception. Add a bright touch to organza table napkins by tying them with a contrasting satin ribbon bow and decorating this with an item such as a bauble covered in gold metallic thread to add some glitz and glitter to the table. Take your napkin, fold it in half, then in half again and roll up loosely. Take the length of orange ribbon and tie it in a bow around the napkin. Cut the attachment loop on a bauble in half. Use the two ends to tie the bauble to the ribbon to one side of the bow. If the bauble doesn't have an attachment loop, use a needle and cotton and thread this through the top of the bauble. Trim the ends of the ribbon diagonally to neaten the ends. These napkin rings are made by threading a small gold charm, a feather in this case, onto gold wire, along with gold pearlized beads. The rings are open-ended, so they're easy to slide onto the napkins. Quick and simple to make, they look very effective on red napkins with a fine gold thread, but would suit a gold or cream colour scheme too. Take the 30 cm length of gold wire and use the round nose pliers to form a small closed loop at one end to secure the beads on the wire. 
form the wire into coils about 5 cm in diameter to make it easier to handle as you work. Thread the beads onto the free end of the wire, pushing them down the wire as you work. When you've reached 9 cm from the end of the wire, thread on the feather charm. Then continue to bead down the wire until you reach 1.5 cm from the end. Use the round nose pliers to make a loop to secure the beads. Fold up the napkin, taking one corner to another diagonally to form a point, then taking the two sides to the centre and rolling up from the base. Slide the napkin ring in place, adjusting it so that it'll be displayed to the best advantage at the table. Stud delicate pre-cut place cards with diamante before writing the guests' names on them, then setting them on the edge of the wine glasses at the table. We've used pink crystal hearts on pre-cut pink butterflies. Use tweezers to help you position these delicate items, or alternatively, look for self-adhesive stickers instead. Take a blank, pre-cut butterfly place card. Pick up the crystal heart using a pair of tweezers. Squeeze a tiny amount of glue onto the back of the heart and glue to the place card. If you don't have any glue with the right sort of applicator nozzle, use a cocktail stick to apply a tiny dab of glue to the back of the craft crystals or use self-adhesive stickers. Repeat with a second heart. You have a chance to reposition the heart slightly before the glue dries if necessary. Your card is then ready for you to write the name in the space left for it. Then slip each card onto the glass at the appropriate place setting at the venue. These dramatic bows made of wired silk ribbon with the tails decorated with wired crystal drops make a stylish chair back decoration for the chairs at a traditional wedding table. Match the ribbons and crystals to the general colour theme, which could also be designed to tie in with the bridal gown and the floral decorations. The bows are easy to attach to the chairs using touch and close spot fasteners on the back. Take the length of ribbon and form it into a bow with equal tails. Adjust the loops evenly. Take two lengths of crystal drops and join them together by twisting the wire of one around the beaded section of another. Repeat with another two lengths and keep the remaining two lengths as single lengths. Add a single length of crystal drops to the top of one long length and thread the wires through the knot from the front with the drops laid over one of the tails. Repeat with the remaining strands of drops on the other side of the bow. Turn the bow over, take the ends of wire round to the back and twist them together. Attach one half of the touch and close fastener to the back of the knot over the top of the wires. Take the other half of the fastener with you to the venue and attach centrally to the top of the chair back. Check with the venue that this is acceptable. If not, use fine wire or nylon thread to tie the bow to the chair back. Trim the ends of the ribbon tails diagonally. These striking gold-decorated champagne flutes 
perfect for the bridal couple, are actually simple enough to make for all the guests at the top table. Designed with a gold band sponged with glass paint that sits below the rim of the glass, they're decorated with gold glass outliner, which adds depth and sparkle to the design. Cut a strip of 2.5 cm wide masking tape, long enough to wrap around the top of the flute. Stick it lightly to your work surface and draw a horizontal line along the centre in pencil. Wrap this around the top of the glass, matching the pencil line with the top edge of the glass. Stick in place, smoothing the tape down well. Apply a full width strip of tape lightly below this. No need to press it down as it'll be peeled away. Stick another full width piece below this. Peel away the central piece of tape and smooth down the lower piece of tape, getting rid of as many wrinkles as possible. Cut an ordinary household sponge in half to make it easier to handle. Apply gold glass paint to the sponge with a brush and dab a light layer all over the exposed band of glass. Peel off both remaining strips of tape and set the glass aside for the paint to dry for at least an hour. Measure around the top rim of the glass to find out the circumference. Divide this total into four and mark four points to this measurement around the glass, just above the gold band, using a china graph or soft pencil. Mark four points by eye below the gold band, corresponding to the first marked set. Using a gold glass outliner, dab small dots all around the top edge of the band, leaving a tiny gap between each dot. Repeat along the lower edge of the band. first marked china graph point, make a dot of gold outliner in the centre of the band. Draw a tapered line at the top and bottom and sides to create six petals in all. Repeat three more times around the glass. Draw a heart centred between two flowers by starting with a blob and drawing the outliner down, no longer squeezing the tube. 
Repeat for the other side of the heart, then create three more hearts around the glass. Make a dot of outliner outside the band at the top and bottom of each heart. Set the glass aside and leave to dry overnight. Then gently rub away the china graph or pencil marks. If you've used water-based paints, fire according to the manufacturer's instructions. If not, your glass should be hand-washed only. These striking gold-decorated champagne flutes, perfect for the bridal couple, are actually simple enough to make for all the guests at the top table. Designed with a gold band sponged with glass paint that sits below the rim of the glass, they're decorated with gold glass outliner, which adds depth and sparkle to the design. Cut a strip of 2.5 cm wide masking tape, long enough to wrap around the top of the flute. Stick it lightly to your work surface and draw a horizontal line along the center in pencil. Wrap this around the top of the glass, matching the pencil line with the top edge of the glass. Stick in place, smoothing the tape down well. Apply a full width strip of tape lightly below this. No need to press it down as it'll be peeled away. Stick another full width piece below this. Peel away the central piece of tape and smooth down the lower piece of tape, getting rid of as many wrinkles as possible. Cut an ordinary household sponge in half to make it easier to handle. Apply gold glass paint to the sponge with a brush and dab a light layer all over the exposed band of glass. Peel off both remaining strips of tape and set the glass aside for the paint to dry for at least an hour. Measure around the top rim of the glass to find out the circumference. Divide this total into four and mark four points to this measurement around the glass, just above the gold band, using a china graph or soft pencil. Mark four points by eye below the gold band, corresponding to the first marked set. Using a gold glass outliner, dab small dots all around the top edge of the band, leaving a tiny gap between each dot.
Repeat along the lower edge of the band. At the first marked China Graph point, make a dot of gold outliner in the center of the band. Draw a tapered line at the top and bottom and sides to create six petals in all. Repeat three more times around the glass. Draw a heart centered between two flowers by starting with a blob and drawing the outliner down, no longer squeezing the tube. Repeat for the other side of the heart, then create three more hearts around the glass. Make a dot of outliner outside the band at the top and bottom of each heart. Set the glass aside and leave to dry overnight. Then gently rub away the china graph or pencil marks. If you've used water-based paints, fire according to the manufacturer's instructions. If not, your glass should be hand-washed only. These dramatic bows made of wired silk ribbon with the tails decorated with wired crystal drops make a stylish chair back decoration for the chairs at a traditional wedding table. Match the ribbons and crystals to the general colour theme, which could also be designed to tie in with the bridal gown and the floral decorations. The bows are easy to attach to the chairs using touch and close spot fasteners on the back. Take the length of ribbon and form it into a bow with equal tails. Adjust the loops evenly. Take two lengths of crystal drops and join them together by twisting the wire of one around the beaded section of another. Repeat with another two lengths and keep the remaining two lengths as single lengths. Add a single length of crystal drops to the top of one long length and thread the wires through the knot from the front with the drops laid over one of the tails. Repeat with the remaining strands of drops on the other side of the bow. Turn the bow over, take the ends of wire round to the back and twist them together. Attach one half of the touch and close fastener to the back of the knot over the top of the wires. Take the other half of the fastener with you to the venue and attach centrally to the top of the chair back. Check with the venue that this is acceptable. If not, use fine wire or nylon thread to tie the bow to the chair back. Trim the ends of the ribbon tails diagonally. These simple twists of bright tissue paper decorated with mirrors and flowers look rather like giant wrapped sweets. Quick and simple to make, each one will hold several chocolate coins or flat mints and will add a fun touch to each place setting at your theme table. And they serve the practical function of providing chocolates for each guest to have with their coffee. Put the stack of coins in the centre of the layer of tissue paper. Fold it over several times to enclose them, then twist the ends to secure. Clip into the tissue for about 5 centimetres at each end. 
making the clips about five millimeters apart to form a fringe. Add a fabric flower to the top of the sweetie using a glue dot or all-purpose glue. Then use another glue dot or more glue to add the mirrored Indian decoration, known as a shisha mirror, to the centre of this. You can look out for shisha mirrors in haberdashery departments or craft shops. Well-designed and carefully crafted finishing touches to the table decoration at the wedding reception make all the difference. These stylish flower-shaped favour holders are easy to make and guests will appreciate their clever design as well as enjoying the favour concealed within. Using the template supplied, carefully cut out the flower shape from some printed paper. Referring to the lines printed on the template, fold along the solid lines with the unpatterned or wrong sides facing and then refold each fold with the patterned or right sides facing. Run your fingernail along the folds to give the paper a good crease. After you've made all the folds where the solid lines are seen on the template, Fold each petal along the broken lines on the template with the unpatterned or wrong sides facing. Now pinch each petal together along its fold lines and overlap them so they lay flat in the same direction to form the flower. Open the flower, slip a favour inside and refold it. The guests can now enjoy a favour enclosed in a container as visually appealing as the favour is delicious to eat. These elegant favour sachets are easy to make using wallpaper or wrapping paper folded into simple sachets and tied with organza ribbons. Fill them with chocolates or a small gift for each guest and put a label on the front of each one with the details of the bridal couple and the date of the marriage. Cut a 22 by 12 centimetre piece of wallpaper or wrapping paper in a traditional print. On the wrong side, mark the halfway point on each side and score across between the marks using a bone folder and metal ruler. On the wrong side, run a strip of double-sided tape from the scored point to the top on two parallel sides. Peel off the backing tape, fold along the scored line and stick the two sides together, smooth along the fold. Use a ruler to help you find the central point at the top. Punch a hole through both layers using a single hole punch. Add the chocolates or a gift to the sachet. Take all four pieces of ribbon of varying widths but the same length. Fold the ends together to help you thread them through the punched hole and pull through to give you even lengths on both sides. Tie in a knot at the top of the sachet and trim the ends diagonally and separately to slightly different lengths.
apply a strip of double-sided tape to the back of the pre-printed label, which is already stuck to gold paper, and stick this centrally to the front of the envelope. Make these charms to identify individual wine or champagne glasses and also to celebrate a special day. Particularly useful at a buffet, guests will also find these handy once they move away from the table at the wedding reception. Create different colourways for each person or colour theme them by table with a distinctive bead to make it clear to each guest which glass belongs to them. You can also celebrate the wedding day by incorporating beads with the initial letters of the bride and groom. Each charm simply clips around the base of the glass stem, giving each guest a takeaway memento of the occasion. To make each charm, you'll need an earring hoop, which clips closed and has a loop at the base, and a head pin, which is a bit like an extra long dressmaking pin with a blunt end instead of a point. Both are available from jewellery making suppliers. Take the head pin and thread a selection of beads onto it, according to the chosen colour theme for each glass and including beads with the initials of the bride and groom. Use a mixture of bead shapes and types within each colour theme. Thread the beads to within one centimetre of the end of the wire, then use round nose pliers to form the wire into a loop for attachment. Hook the loop onto the earring hoop and close the loop tightly to secure using the round nose pliers. An easy way to dress up a simple organza favour bag, available from wedding accessory suppliers, is to fill it with gold foil-wrapped chocolates, everybody's favourites, and add a personalised tag and a beaded wire heart. Put one at every place setting, it'll make a lovely memento of the occasion. Take an organza bag and fill it with chocolates. Pull the cord tightly around the top of the bag to secure then undo the knot at one end of the tie. Pre-write the name tags on squares of cream card, setting the cards on the diagonal and writing across the centre. Punch a hole in the top point of the card using a single hole punch and thread onto the cord. Thread a beaded wire heart onto the cord. Knot the cords together and retie the open end of the cord. It's a simple task to make an attractive and inviting customised guest book by attaching a photo of the happy couple to its cover. Long after the wedding day has passed, you can recapture the spirit of the big event, both by reading the greetings and best wishes and by viewing a photograph of the happy couple. Black photo mounts and a glossy black and white print create a timeless, stylish look. Remove a self-adhesive photo mount from the backing and slip it over a corner of the photograph. Repeat this for the other three corners, resting the photo carefully on your worktop while you detach a new mount so that they don't stick to the surface. When they're all on, position the photo and its mounts carefully on the book's front cover and press down on the top two mounts before smoothing the photo flat and pressing down on the bottom two. Add a fun touch to a reception table by piling these unusual favours boxes onto a glass cake stand and putting them in the centre of the table. Stamped with tiny pink hearts and decorated with wire twists adorned with more hearts as an appropriate wedding motif, the boxes can be filled with chocolates or traditional sugared almonds, 
so the guests can have these with their coffee at the end of the meal or with a small gift that they can take away with them. With the boxes flat and lid side facing up, mark points two centimeters apart down each side. Starting at the flap of the lid and again close to the top of the main box section. Draw lines to join the marks using a felt tip marker pen. Turn the box over and place face down on blotting paper to avoid smudging the ink. Rule lines on the main section of the box on this side in the same way so that they'll join up when the box is formed. Keep this side facing up and stamp small hearts between the lines, using a ruler as a guide to help you position the hearts. Stamp two evenly spaced hearts in the bottom row on one face and a single heart in the centre of the row on the adjacent face. On the next row, stamp a single heart centred in the row above the two hearts and stamp two hearts above and either side of the single heart on the adjacent face. Turn the box over on the blotting paper and repeat on the box section of the second side, keeping the heart pattern following along the rows on this side. Turn the box around to stamp the hearts on the lid. Allow the ink to dry, then pierce a hole through the centre of the lid. Cut a 20 cm length of wire and, keeping the first 2 cm straight, wind the remainder round a pencil to form a spiral, leaving 2 cm straight at the other end. Repeat to produce two twists for each box you're making. Stick a strip of double-sided tape about one centimetre above one edge of a piece of bright pink card, positioning it so it's where the heart will be punched out. Use the craft punch to punch one heart for each wire twist. If you're going to punch a lot of hearts, work with the card side facing the blade to avoid blunting the blade. Also, punch a card heart without tape for each twist. Peel the tape off one heart, stick the heart to the wire, and then stick an ordinary heart to this, sandwiching one end of the wire.
Assemble the box, tucking in all the flaps. Insert the free ends of the two wires through the box lid. Bend the ends back and tape down to hold in place. Adjust the wire spirals to stand upright. Fill the box with shredded tissue and chocolates, almonds or a small gift. Votive holders with coloured themed tea lights are a welcome addition to the reception tables, particularly when the reception runs on into the evening. These simple glass containers have been sprayed with glass frosting spray, with heart shapes created using a reverse stencil technique and sticky back plastic. The hearts peel away to give clear glass areas through which the candlelight will shine. Punch six hearts out of a sheet of sticky backed plastic using a craft punch. Peel off the backing and apply one heart to each side of the outside of the glass votive holder, about one centimetre down from the top. Position the remaining heart, spacing them equally between the first two. Set the votive holder upside down on top of an upturned lid or an egg cup resting on a large sheet of newspaper or scrap paper to protect your work surface. Shake the can of frosting spray well, then spray the votive holder to give an even coating, revolving it as you work. Leave it to dry according to the instructions. It's worth spraying all the votive holders you'll need in one go as they take a little while to dry. But you must work in a well-ventilated space and keep the spray away from children. When dry, carefully peel off the hearts and set a pink tea light in the holder. When lit, the flame will show off the hearts. This is an unusual way of presenting a place name by attaching it to a knife and fork, then setting it on the plate at each place setting. Lay the knife and fork in a crossed formation, then dress with a beaded spray, tying everything with an organza ribbon and adding the place name with a glue dot. If you pre-prepare the elements, this is quick to put together at the reception. Take three strands of each type of wired spray and put them together. Use the covered wire of one of the spray stems to bind around the others to hold them all. Clip away the ends of the remaining wires. Lay the knife and fork centrally across the length of organza ribbon in a crossed formation. Lay the bound sprig on top of the knife and fork. Tie the organza ribbon in a bow to secure everything. Take a pre-cut strip of gold paper on which you've written the guest's name and attach to the bow knot with a glue dot. Alternatively, use a script-style typeface on a computer to pre-print all the guest's names to make into labels.
Creating a stylishly displayed menu for the wedding breakfast will make the guests feel welcome as they sit down for their meal. This black and white themed menu card holder is simple to make and will impress with its classic elegance. Cut a strip of textured white card 54 cm long by 13 cm wide. This will be the mount or easel for the menu. Use a ruler and pencil to make marks on both sides of the strip 4 cm, 9 cm and 31.5 cm in from one end. These will be on the inside of the menu holder, the side that won't be facing outward. Next, use a bone folder to score across the card, following the pencil lines you've drawn and using the ruler to give a straight edge. Fold along the scored lines so that the pencil marks are on the inside of the fold and use the bone folder to press down on the fold to give it a good crease. Open the strip out flat again. Use a feather pattern stamp and a black ink pad to stamp a feather on a rectangle of white paper 13 cm wide by 3 cm deep. An alternative to a stamped feather is to attach a real black feather to the easel using spray adhesive. Take a menu which has been printed on a 21 by 10 cm rectangle of white paper and resting on a cutting mat, place the menu on the long end of the easel with the short edges level. Pierce holes through the top corners with a bradawl. With the menu on the strip on a cutting board, make small holes as a guide for position on both sides before making larger holes with the menu and strip off the cutting board. Insert black brads or paper fasteners through each hole. Splay open the prongs of the fastener on the underside. Hold the stamped rectangle centrally on the other end of the easel. Using the bradawl, carefully pierce holes centrally through each short edge before fixing a black brad through each hole to secure the paper to the easel. Refold the easel to see the full effect. This smartly displayed menu will be sure to sharpen the guests' appetites by attracting their attention to the culinary delights to come.